Hey guys, it's been a while since I've, I've vlogged and uh, so I, I wanted to get one in and I, I got a really good letter to get to here. Um, but um, I, I started wondering like, do I have enough shirts to wear a different shirt every time? And then I thought, I'm a guy, does it really matter? Um, uh, another thing that I thought I would tell you, that my I think my wife wanted me to tell you is that she thinks that I love vlogging because no one can interrupt me. So there, I, I just wanted you to know that. Um, okay, so I got this letter from Sarah, and Sarah was a, a former student of mine at BYU, and uh, she write, wrote a really good letter, and I thought this was really a good topic to discuss. So I'm just gonna read her letter. Um, was lucky enough to have very supportive parents who never told me I couldn't be an artist because I wouldn't make any money despite the fact that I did well academically in other areas and could potentially have done well in more in a more lucrative field. I'm lucky to have found a supportive husband who thinks that of course I'll get more freelance work once I get my portfolio put together. Um, he seems even more confident than me. I was also lucky to find work doing art school after graduation and graduate without student loans. Very smart. Uh, despite having no scholarships and only limited financial help from parents who were helping three other college kids, blah, blah, blah. Okay, lately I've run into a lot of stories about parents who weren't as supportive as mine were. They tell their kids to think of some other job because artists just don't make, an, make any money and apparently there are plenty of numbers to back up these discouraging parents. Uh, I, I'm told that art school graduates have the largest amount of student loan defaults per capita over any other group. So are parents right to discourage their kids' artistic aspirations? Is it only a select few? Uh, would be artists that actually make it okay gr great question so um, should parents uh, discourage their kids from being artists uh, based on the the numbers and statistics so I want to talk about this in a few different ways and first basically say I don't have the answer but I can tell you some things that might help you make decisions and if you're a parent might help you make decisions for your kids um, or how you handle, how you encourage your kids or advise your kids. Uh, one, I would I would point also to the fact that there are a lot of people um, graduating with degrees today and they're not able to find any jobs at all. I'm probably going to lean more, you're gonna find in this video, on um, letting people do what they want in school and not discouraging kids from going into one thing or another. I have met so many people in doing our SVS online classes at, this is my little shameless plug, www.svslearn.com. Um, but I've, I've gotten letters from I, just countless numbers of, of, of students and people that are taking our classes or people that are, um, that are just acquaintances online or people that just want to drop me a line or something. And there, it, it reads, and, and almost every letter reads the same. I went into this because my parents wanted me to, or I went into this because I wanted to, um, this other field other than art, um, because I felt like it would be more lucrative. And now I am either, and you can, then, then it goes into the flow chart of either I'm now retired and I can do what I want because I made money over here. And so I'm now in a good place and now I want to be an artist or two, I can't stand what I've been doing. So I'm just going to wing it and just go and do the thing that I want because I, I, I couldn't, you know, some people will say, I, c I just couldn't take another year of doing what I was doing, whatever it is, fill in the blank. Um, and uh, just a lot of different variations of that theme of first I, I did it this way and now I'm so glad that I'm doing it this way. And, it's, and a lot of success stories too. Uh, there's a, there are quite a few artists who, that I know who started out in another career and ended up switching over and are doing quite well in art. Um, that doesn't mean that, that everyone is, obviously. There are a lot of people in art that, that aren't doing well. Um, but what I would say is, um, I think it, a lot of it de depends on how you define making it, and I think a lot of it defines uh, depends on how you define art. Um, if you look at the definition of art, what art is, um, on Google it says uh, the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination typically in the visual form such as painting or sculpture not necessarily 
uh, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. My definition of art, the way I think of art is, uh, I really like the idea of that um, changing someone emotionally. So, um, and, and that's what it says in the, the last little thing, in beauty or emotion. Um, and the reason for that is, I look at uh, art, Art is all around us, basically. You know, if you have a if you have a job where you're adding up numbers, and that's all you're doing all day, and you probably don't have a lot of art in your job. Now, you might have art in the way that you talk to a coworker. Um, you can become very mechanical and machine-like, and that's not art in the way that you deal with someone. You know, where it's just hi, bye, and you don't you don't communicate and and talk about um, you know things that you did over the weekend or something um, but a lot of it is uh, I mean think about the think about the waiter or the waitress and this is an example that Seth Godin somebody that I really uh, admire uses this example uh, when you have a server come I guess it's server now these you have a server come to your table and say uh, what will you have today and then they just write it down okay bye and then they they go and turn in the the, the, the slip um, they're handling you in a mechanical fashion. Um, if it's, hey, how's it going? And they're very sincere. Sometimes you get people that you can tell they're just kind of going through the motions. But someone who's like saying, I'm here at work and I'm going to try to make it the best day for me, which is in turn going to make it the best day for my clients. Um, the time's going to go faster for me because I'm going to use my art, uh, my emotional labor to make them have a good experience. Uh, that's a gift. And that goes beyond the contract of, um, of, of whether or not, um, of what you're getting paid for and what you're, what you're actually signing up for when you do the job. Um, some people use art and some people don't. Um, I, I would like to also bring attention to the fact that every single thing that we appreciate in life has a, an element of art to it, right? So if you go into any store, if you go into um, even an automotive store, but if you go into uh, a department store, let's say you go into Target or something like that, or, uh, well, you've got all the clothing, that's all been designed by somebody. Okay, so every single clothing product was designed by an artist. Um, if you go into the, 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 um, the, the kitchen area, every single product in there was designed by an artist. So you can't say that the person that's designing spatulas um, and there's some pretty cool spatulas out there on the market right now. Um, that that person isn't an artist. That person is an artist. They have a job. They're designing. They're on the computer probably a lot of them um, nowadays. Um, you know, look at rugs. Um, look at bicycles. Look at anything that you want to buy had to be designed by someone. Um, any time you want to go out to a restaurant, a, a, a finer restaurant, the meals were designed by an artist. Um, the meals are crafted by artisans, um, especially at the higher end. Um, that's why they call them the culinary arts, right? Uh, what about um, entertainment? So you have everybody in the entertainment industry um, full of artists. Really, when you think about it, um, there's really nothing that you buy. Maybe maybe gasoline, <laughs> you know, but but anything that is on a shelf that that has to catch your eye was designed, I'm looking at my speakers right now, because I just got new speakers, and they look really cool. Um, and they were designed by somebody. Somebody got to got to pick uh, what they look like. Um, I got to decide all that. So uh, to me, I think when, when we say, when we say making it as an artist, that's a very broad term. Um, in your definition is gonna be different than my definition, and, my, and our definitions are gonna be different than the next guy. Um, but I think that, um, I think if you stick with that broader definition, there are a lot of people that are working in a lot of places right now that are using their artistic skills for their job or for their work. Some of them are working in house, some of them working freelance, some of them own their own businesses. Um, I do feel that, and I've talked about this before, but I, I really feel that the, um, that the opportunities have shifted into a place that is very difficult for most people to see and for most people to um, to find and to exploit. Um, I think that because of globalization, because uh, people are 
or competing for, for jobs um, all over the world, prices for a job job where someone says, I would like someone to draw a fire hydrant. How much will you charge me to draw that? I think that, that those jobs are just as plentiful as they ever have been. But I think there's probably 100 times more people going after them, which has made the price go down. Um, I'm not interested in that uh, anymore. Um, I'm interested in publishing because publishing um, still, you know, in children's publishing in the higher ends, uh, it really values each individual artist that it chooses. You know, when an editor or an art director chooses an artist, they're not trying to fill in a hole like we have, we have to make a book and so we're going to just find the lowest bidder. That's not what they do. They, they look for the style that they think will best match up with that with that story or they find a story and an artist that are combined really well together in one person and they decide that they think they can make money off of the product of publishing that book um, and so that market is very competitive but if you have the right product you can do quite well there still um, but there's never going to be enough room for most people to to get work in that in that area just like in a lot of fields, there are a lot of um, jobs that are getting outsourced to other countries. A lot of jobs that have been replaced or being replaced by automation. I really feel like it's a mistake to try to force a child uh, or, or an adolescent to go into something because they can make more money doing it. Um, you know, if, if uh, I mean, life is so short. I, I cherish every day that I when I'm when I'm out walking I just think my gosh I've got everything I want even though I'm not rich I've got I've got freedom I've got freedom to create the kinds of uh, art pieces of artwork that I want to create to work on the kind of uh, products that I want to work on and um, that is to me that's my definition of making is having the freedom to work on the kind of art that you want to work on um, I, to me it doesn't get any higher than that um, if I make more money, then that's a bonus, but it's not the, it's it's not my requirement for happiness. Um, money does make you make things easier, and so and takes away a lot a lot more stress. And I've talked about this on another video, um, where my monthly requirement is so much lower than it used to be, just because we're making really good decisions now with the money that we make. Um, my stress level is is non-existent compared to where it was um, about five or seven years ago so anyway um, I hope this helps a little bit um, I think that uh, I think I really believe that uh, the kids will do better and will thrive if they're able to um, make these discoveries on their own they, they might go to school uh, they might go into art and then they might find out that yeah, they really don't like it that much. I have students at UVU that I can tell uh, do that all the time, um, where they're like, they look around and they go, hmm, you know, this this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It's harder than I thought it was going to be, or something. The caution that I would give is that um, life is short, and um, if you are driven, if you're the type of person who really wants, um, really wants to. Uh, make it as an artist in the terms of in the financial sense maybe I would say that um, if you have the art bug in you where you just love to create stuff no matter whether you go into illustration or photography or uh, or writing or music or the culinary arts or whatever it is you know, I see a lot of people that will bounce around from one to another you know, as soon as one starts to get hard, they'll bounce to something that they think is easier. Um, and the the truth is that n the top at the, when you get to the top level of anything, um, it's never easy. Um, it's always going to be hard, and uh, you're just spinning your wheels if you switch around looking for that one that's going to be easier. I, I personally, I think your your best bet is to find something. Um, that you really enjoy doing and then just become a master at it and just work and you will fall in love with it the better you get it's it becomes this uh, this thing that uh, you know as you get good at it and you start to impress other people it kind of feeds off of itself and that's what I really found and I've talked about this before too 
I couldn't work on a painting for more than more than a few hours and now I can work on one for over a week um, and that's not because I'm forcing myself to it's because I love it and I want to really make it make it work and so um, and it's just a pure joy so um, yeah I think that uh, I think that as parents I do think it's a mistake in general to try to force somebody to do, go and do something that they really hate because they'll end up probably wanting to switch or or being miserable at their job you know and and that can lead to other problems you know why do people come home and drink uh, to forget the day that they had you know because they have such a lousy day at work um, in an ideal world you can't wait to wake up in the morning and work on that thing that you love to do um, and the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you're able to pursue that thing that you really like and I, I, I feel like probably what parents should be doing instead of trying to, to force a you know a square peg in a round hole is to try to teach principles of you know commitment um, hard work uh, determination um, and that starts with little things you know um, for me it started with uh, scouting you know I was a boy scout and I was given the uh, opportunity to get an award when I was really young I, I think I was about 10 or 11 and I had to cut down a tree, uh, which is probably illegal today. So don't don't hate on me too much. Um, but I I, would, I had to cut down a tree, and to me it seemed like it was probably about that big around. When it was probably more like that uh, with an axe. And then I had to cut a four foot section out of it, and then I had to quarter that, split that into quarters. And it took me about two hours. And when I was done, my hands were completely bloody, just bleeding. And I was probably too young to do it at the time, but that one experience taught me more than than I could have ever learned in a book or at school or anything else it taught me something about myself that I could start something and finish something and that to me is more important than than almost anything else um, I've done you know long hikes 20 mile hikes where you feel like your your legs are gonna you know fall off every time you have an experience like that where you do something where you have to stretch and go beyond what you thought you could do Anytime you approach something anywhere near that, it's a piece of cake in the future, you know. And I think too many people start and quit things and they never teach themselves what they're actually capable of and how far they're, they're actually um, able to go. Um, we used to climb to the top of this mountain in the wintertime in the snow. The snow was uh, two to three feet deep and we had to have snowshoes. And the first time that I did it, I, what they call bonked, right? I ran out of... Uh, uh, energy and I almost passed out it was it was so um, strenuous I couldn't even talk and when we got to the top um, I thought I was gonna die and all I did was just kind of sit down and slump down and it was the one of my friends who who made a fire and we heated up some water and got some soup on and I literally felt the life going back into me as I drank that soup Th that experience allowed me to do even harder things to where you look at something and you go I've got this um, I wonder how many of our youth today and how many of our teenagers are getting experiences like that which teach them I can do this you know the, the re one of the reasons why I feel like I can start a business isn't because I'm really good at business it's just because it's like I've done hard things before how hard could this be I don't know I'll try it if I fail I fail you know um, so I hope that answers the, the question a little bit or gives maybe some things to think about. Um, I do have a friend who, um, you know, he was, yeah, I, 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 this is no mystery, I did really horribly in school and uh, I got really bad grades um, going all through school and compared to my sister, my older sister who, she got 580 Kappa when she was in, in college, I mean she got straight A's through school most of the time. So we both come home and show our poor our report cards and I would want to hide mine and she's like well don't you have yours well you know <laughs> and it was this 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 opposite my parents just could not understand because they were they were good students too so I had this friend that I one of my best friends that I grew up with and he he says um, what should I do with my son he's getting really bad grades in school and I says well what does he like to do he likes to draw and so oops the the camera almost timed out there. It's a good thing I'm still going. Um, and uh, 
so he, he says, well, he likes to, he really likes to draw like you did. And what should I do? And I'm like, well, you know, don't try to make him feel bad because he's good at something or because he likes something, you know? I mean, he might not be good at or might not want to do the thing that you want him to do, but that's okay because if we were all the same, then that wouldn't really work, would it? I mean, you know, so um, I think rather than fearing what's going to be in store for your kids, um, you got to have faith that they're going to figure it out. There are a lot of people in the arts that are making a lot of money. It just doesn't really get talked about that much, um, probably because, yeah, there probably there probably isn't a huge percentage of people, but I, th I don't think that's uh, for lack of... Um, I don't think that's because of the artistic training. I think that's because those the people that aren't doing well have not figured out how um, to monetize that. And um, and I've talked about that in other videos too. Combining your um, combining your skills in art with another idea or with another skill. Um, so, for instance, uh, an example of that would be um, people who write and illustrate. Uh, children's books, which are the most celebrated, you know, Dan Santat just won the Caldecott Award, which is the highest award in children's books. Um, I would speculate that it made him a millionaire overnight, um, and and the reason for that is uh, if you figure on the number of libraries that there are in the country, um, and how many books an average library will buy of a Caldecott winning book, it's pretty easy to do the math, and that book will stay in print for the rest of his life, and will continue to earn him. A handsome living um, if he were the artist alone that probably wouldn't have happened um, it's 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 more common at least nowadays that the author and the illustrator are the same person which means that you it's not good enough to learn one skill you're exponentially more powerful when you combine two skills together or when you combine a skill with an idea and I've talked about that before some of the examples are uh, 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 Eric um, Eric Dowdle, who does the the puzzles of the cities, um, and um, so I don't want to talk about that and keep keep going on that because I've made other videos about that, so you can go back and and look at that if you want. But you're just definitely more powerful um, if you if you combine an idea with your skill that you're really good at. It's really important to to develop one skill, one artistic skill, whether it's cooking or whether it's whatever it is. But then it's that's not good enough. To be to be the hired hand is usually always going to earn you less money than if you combine it with something else. So you look at some of these celebrity chefs, are they that much better than all the other chefs that are out there slogging it out every day making amazing food? No. The reason they're better, the reason that Anthony Bourdain is a millionaire is because he combined uh, cooking with writing. He, so you combine two skills together. It's really a hard sell to tell students, hey, guess what? You know how you're going to school to learn an illustration? Well, that's not good enough. You need another skill. So I usually don't talk about that as much at school. Um, but it's true. <laughs> you know, Scott Adams um, of Dilbert. He says he's not the best writer. He's not the best uh, cartoonist. But he put them together and he had Dilbert. <clears throat> he had a great idea. So... Uh, I, I think when we talk about, when parents think about, well, you can't make it as an artist, I think we're defining art in a really narrow way, like, is my child going to be a, an amazing gallery painter and just do these amazing paintings? There, that's a very, very small market. Or is my child going to illustrate um, illustrations for comic books or illustrate illustrations for authors? Again, that's a small group. But when you define art in a different way, there's room for lots and lots of people to be successful. Um, and I think that's the more important thing to keep your eye on. And quality of life. To me, quality of life is more important than than so many other things. And uh, um, Anyway, I hope this helps. And thanks for the question, Sarah. That was a great one. And I'll try to vlog more often. I got busy lately with uh, some projects, and now that those are uh, under control, I've got some more ideas coming up here, and uh, I really appreciate the, the suggestions. So thanks a lot.